A normal day in winter. A young girl wakes up to the phone alarm lazily. She hears a noise outside and sees a dog barking at trash and his owner trying to pull him away. She brushes her teeth and cleans a strange hand mark on the mirror. While leaving for school, her mom calls her to get an umbrella cause it may rain today. But she says she's gonna buy one. In the school lobby, she's is still a little bit sleepy. A big pillow hugs her from the back, and she can tell that it's her friend from this mega-size mommy milkers. While chatting, another girl asks them to get out of the way. The girl stops for a while looking at Maruko, then leaves again saying never mind. In the class, Maruko was looking out the window at the wind moving a tennis ball, but her teacher's voice comes to her ears and asks her to start reading for the class. But, the ball is still moving with no wind. Later in the break, Maruko tells her friend Hana that she's eating a lot. She says it's okay. I think I have a good metabolism. But Maruko can tell where all this food goes. Suddenly Maruko gets a weird feeling and looks around. But when she looks back she finds her friend took a bite and starts acting like nothing happened. Later in the bathroom, she hears a hit on the wall from the next bath that got her wondering if the person next door is okay. But when leaving, she sees the next bath door locked. After school, her friend suggested shopping later for a new bra, cause hers got tighter again. Maruko knows that the problem isn't with the bra. They wave to each other before taking a different road. She check her pack and notices that her cute keychain is missing. And she went all the way she came from till she got back to school searching for it. She sees a smoky figure in the dark. And she turns on the light to look again. But nothing is there. She sees her medal under the table and kneels down for it. She keeps trying till she finally gets it. But she gets that weird feeling again. She checks the lobby, but no one there. It started to rain outside and Maruko starts running searching for a cover till she gets to the bus station and tries to squeeze her wet skirt clothes. She texts Hana to make sure she got home, but out of a sudden her phone starts acting glitchy then an ugly figure scared her off. She freezes for a while, then she gathers herself and moves carefully to pick up the phone. She checks the chat and sees that everything is normal. She tells herself I must be tired today and clean her eyes. Maruko somehow managed to defeat the urge to run and made up a fixed face. She pretends she can't see him and looks away but the chunky monster is still hovering around her to catch a reaction. She keeps acting, whatever the ugly creature does, till he finally leaves saying, she can't see me, and Maruko is still fixed in her place from fear. She totally saw that. At home, Maruko brushes her teeth before sleeping, but she again sees that hand mark on the mirror. Wondering who made it, she wipes it again and bent down to wash her mouth. But when she looks up, another ghost is directly in her back. The ghost slaps the mirror making the mark again. From the reaction she was making, his body transforms and Maruko finds a long nick getting in front of her saying, Can you see me? She keeps a fixed face this time also, and bent down pretending to wash her eyes. Shaking in fear she tries to believe that this is her imagination. I must have been really stressed, but when she looks up again, it's still there. All real, so close to her from behind. A while later, Maruko is searching for something, and keeps looking till she gets out with a salt pack in her hand. She empties the alt into a bowl and puts it in front of her room door, and wishes that it can keep these things away. Even that thing in the bathroom that stayed for 30 minutes. She jumps to her bed and holds the phone to Google out and exercise items. Prayer beads come out as a result. Then she turns it off and goes to sleep. But she notices that the salt is spilled. She ignores this and goes to sleep anyway. But there is a noise from under the cover. When she left it up, she find another creature under her blanket on top of her belly saying, Mama, she holds it and goes to sleep anyway. In the morning, she opens her eyes. The first thing she do is checking under the blanket for the ghost but nothing is there. Even in these places, where she saw this creature before, she finds nothing. Walking happily into the school thinking she must have been stressed much yesterday. Suddenly her friend hugs her from the back, scaring the shit out of her. Hana wonders why she got this reaction. Maruko stands up saying to herself, I can't see anything, that's good news. A shadow out of the window walking by. Maruko asks her friend isn't this the third floor? The ghost heard it and comes in, directly in front of her, blocking Hana's face and says, Good morning sensei. It's not her imagination, it's totally real. Hana wonders why she's staring much at her, but Maruko keeps a fixed face till the student ghost finally leaves. Hana says, are you gonna ask me out? But Maruko ignores her friend saying to herself, like hell this is gonna happen. I'm only gonna be dominated by these two monsters you have. In the girls' changing room, the girls are talking about a scary ghost head that can hide in the victim's closet. 
Hana asks Maruko to open the lock for her cause she's afraid. Maruko hesitates at first cause she already knows about her bad luck recently, but she does it anyway. But nothing is there. When she accidentally looks up, she finds a real ghost head. Maruko tries to keep a straight face and ignores it and everything will be okay. But Hana can't reach her phone and asks her to bring it for her. Maruko hesitates for a while but in the end, she gets it even after the ghost almost scared the shit out of her. Later in class, her friend tells her something she's afraid others would hear. She forgot her panties in the changing room, it's totally exposed down there. Can you? But Maruko says instantly, no way I'm going back. Okay okay, like nothing is gonna happen when I'm like this anyway. I guess we all can tell that something definitely gonna happen. Maruko gets a weird feeling from the direction of her friend's table, and as expected, she tries to push the table away. Then she takes Hana's hand and says she wanna go to the nurse's office. Hana tries to stop her to figure out what's going on but when Maruko looks back, she finds that it's too late already. The ghost is already here, holding with all his long hands to her thick friend parts. At the nurse's office, Hana is trying the nurse tools to kill time while waiting for her. I can't hear my heartbeat, maybe cause there is something in the way. What about you Maruko? I bet I can hear yours clearly. Damn! Maruko ignores her joke, and she finds a hand sanitizer and decides to see if it can do something against this perverted ghost, and sprays much of it. It got Hana's clothes wet. That's almost showing what's under it, but this made the ghost start shaking suddenly. Maruko thinks that it's working, but it just got the ghost more happy. He's a man of culture as well. Hana comes at her to hear her heartbeat with the ghost ready to squeeze her as well, and she does it. But the nurse comes in. Aren't you both having fun? The ghost runs at her without thinking. Maruko watches him holding to the nurse like he never saw something like this before. The two friends apologize for the trouble and leave the office. While Maruko feels kinda defeated, somehow. After school they go to the sweet store. And Maruko goes to stands in the queue while looking at the menu on her phone. Her friend calls her. What are you doing in the middle of the road? She asks herself if that's the store queue, that what queue I'm in then. She realizes that this is a queue of ghosts. But her friend comes and pulls her away saying stop staring at your phone or you gonna get hit by a car. From the deepest parts of her heart, she thanks her friend after seeing the end of the ghost's queue. On the way home they find a little cute kitten. And of course a little cute ghost as well. Her friends decide to make a post on the internet for someone to adopt it. They are waiting at the park for someone to come and pick the kitten up. And of course with my little boy ghosty as well. Hana starts playing around with the kitten happily. But she hit a dude. She looks up and rises her head to apologize. But she stops when she sees his scary face. She feels terrified and goes back to her seat and thinks that he's gonna kill her. And leaves the dude standing. Maruko can see something, but someone calls them. Excuse me, aren't you the one with the kitten? This time it's a good looking guy. And Hana gets happy this time and says, Isn't he a nice dude? Let's give the kitten to him. But Maruko stands frozen in her place from what her eyes can see. This dude is evil, with dark cat souls all around him, and little ghost fights with it. She refuses to give the kitten. He wonders why at first, but changes his mind and leaves the place. Hana sees that the other dude is still standing and gets more terrified that he might kill her. But Maruko takes the kitten from Hana's hand, and goes to him. She pushes it to the dude and says, Please take care of it. He gets really heat-touching reaction and say, Thanks, I will take really good care of it. Maruko can see how badly her friend judged this dude from the only way he looks. He takes the kitten gently and leaves while playing with it. Hana comes asking, Are you sure about that? Someone please shut up this racist big boobs or I'm gonna do something bad to her. Time passes and Maruko tries to get used to this, but the ghosts are getting worse till she concludes that acting is not enough. The next day she takes a bus on her way to meet with Hana to shop for prayer beads. But after a while of being on the bus, she feels like something is wrong. She hears the noise of girls chatting, so she looks at the girls by her side. All the girls around her are silent, but the person in front of her, yes, as she actually guessed it. Maruko freezes her face instantly and decides to get down, but... I don't think you understand the trouble you in. 33 been dragging bodies out the cellar again, and really she clicks the button and waits for the bus to stop. The ghost gets down first waiting for her, but she doesn't. She managed to trick it, but suddenly hears a girl's voice chatting and laughing. That stopped her heart, but this time it was the girl on the next seat. She was the first to get to the coffee shop and had to wait for Hana. On another table, she sees a female soul around a pretty face boy that is talking to a girl on the phone. 
The boy makes eye contact with her then smiles. Burr the female ghost sees it. She looks at her and gets nuts. Maruko tries to think of something fast. She picks up her phone and starts typing fast. When the ghost gets beside Maruko, she sees Maruko watching a video of muscled men wrestling and Maruko pretends that this is her type of man, not the handsome ones. The trick worked and the female ghost gets back to her guy saying, Save, Hana finally arrives and they get ready to leave. The dude comes towards them and tries to hit on Maruko, but she ignores him and a pretty young girl arrives. Sorry for being late. Maruko looks at the girl and sees many of these male souls around her. She leaves saying, Birds with feathers. Finally, she got like four prayer beads. The more it is the stronger it can be. She recalls what happened with Hana and decides to give her two prayer beads to protect her and says it's a new trend. Hana decides to treat her on but Bon sweets as thanks and takes a short road to the shop, a road that is filled with these creatures. Maruko slowly steps with the prayer beads ahead of her. She finds that the ghosts are backing off. The prayer beads are working for real or that's what she thought. But a big chunky ghost blocks her way and she sees no trouble at all. With a single word of the ghost, the beads break, and she loses her confidence again and freezes in her place trying not to make any reaction, or that's gonna be the end. Hana sees Maruko standing frozen in her position, and wonders what's going on. Maruko gathers herself, and holds her breath, then walks through the ugly ghost. She succeeded but it was scary as fuck. But Hana lost her doll and tries to get it, and accidentally she pushes Maruko's head inside the creepy ghost. She almost wet herself. In the end, they manage to get the pretty smooth and tasty butt bond. That makes you feel like you eating a real butt. That's not a joke made by me by the way, it's from the show. At a fortune and exorcism store, the student we saw earlier was watching from a distance. But later she leaves saying to herself, we'll give it another shot on another day. We see an old woman who managed to trick a lady with love beads and got paid for this. The lady leaves with a happy face, but the old one smiles to herself saying, it's gonna work two more times. Hana and Maruko come to ask her for strong prayer beads. The old grandma thinks teenagers don't have money, so she can just sell them a random pair of beads, but the prayer beads break instantly, and the old lady realizes this is a serious issue. She apologizes to the kids saying, Sorry this one was kinda old, let me get you a new one, and goes back with a serious look thinking, I maybe be a rotten scammer, but I can see it. It's still blurry figures to me. She asks Maruko if she saw anything odd recently, but Maruko instantly declines it. She clearly can see it but choose to ignore it. What a tough girl she is. On the other side, her friend has a very powerful aura. This can really protect her, but it's not without a price. The old lady was able to see the whole thing and decides not to abandon these girls. She opens a secret metal lock and gets out a well-sealed book. That is her most precious and powerful item. Maruko asks her if she's sure about this, but the old lady insists on it. This is a thing I'm proud of. The old mother is back, but it starts shaking like crazy, then breaks as well, and the beads hit the grandma face badly. Before the sunset, the couple is walking back home and Maruko feels so down. I'm not counting on prayer beads anymore. At some point, the chunky ghost stopped following them. Next morning, she had the feeling while sleeping, trying to resist it. Stop, please. She opens her eyes to find her little brother looking at her in the face. He asks if she was having a dirty dream then ran immediately before she hit him. Maruko has already gotten used to keeping a fixed reaction to any sudden appearance of ghosts, a skill she needs to survive. At night she goes to get a drink from the machine nearby. Her coin drops and when she bends down to get it, she sees a little cute old man ghost that starts running once spotted. She pretends that her coin slipped again and goes after the little cute old man. But, it's now a pig ugly and chubby old man that almost made her shit herself. She tries to keep acting like she used to do, but every cell of her body tells her to run. She already knows if she runs, it's gonna be the end for her acting, screaming from inside and frozen from outside. Please, something, someone, save me. Suddenly a cross snitches the coin and flies away. Unable to process the sudden change in front of her, she finally starts running to catch after it, but with a thank god smile on her face. After school, the girl from that day was watching her from a distance, but her little brother was as well. After his classmates told him that his sister is acting strange recently because she got a boyfriend, he follows her everywhere wondering why she didn't tell him and insists he must protect her. At the library Maruko suddenly sees another ghost that almost got a reaction from her and puts the book back and leaves. Her brother goes to see what book she was reading, but he gets the wrong book. 99 Ways to Please Your Lover At the bath, it's finally time for Maruko to relax. She saw a lot of monsters today. She takes off her underwear as well and goes to wash her body first. Then she gets to a warm bath, deep in her thoughts. 
This ghost in the library was the scariest one. The evil souls that appears out of a sudden are a real threat to me. I might have made a reaction. But she panics suddenly and says what was that? She was actually half asleep as she was really tired. But when she looks to her side, she sees it, a real one this time. No please, not in the bath as well. I have no choice left. She stands up to leave, but the ghost reacts as well and stands. She freezes in her place from the fear and the ghost's head starts looking in her direction. Her tears almost coming out. The bath door opens suddenly and her little brother was coming in. He sees her sister in front of him frozen, and tears almost drop from her eyes. He feels shy and apologizes then turn to leave, but Maruko asks him to let her wash his back. He got to ask her if she has a boyfriend, but she says no. He didn't believe it at first. With the next day's alarm, she wakes to wish the same wish as always. She loses her ability to see these creatures. But there was no use, no one is hearing her prayers. She goes downstairs to have breakfast with her family, but she sees it, the ugliest, and the scariest till the moment, forcing her body to act normal but it's hard this time, much harder than ever. Her brother tells her he saw a pudding in the fridge. Better put a name on it or someone will eat it. His father says, come on, don't bring that up now. Her mother as well says, last year you had a fight with your father because he ate it. Come on everyone, I didn't know who it belongs to. She stands up and says I'm not hungry and gets ready to leave, while her parents are greeting their daughter and wishing her a good day. Miruk goes back inside, opens the fridge, grabs the pudding, and goes to her father's corner. She gives the pudding to his soul. You giving it to me, my dear daughter. Sorry for eating it last year. I really wanted to apologize to you, but I never got that chance. I never got to make it up to you. I guess fate isn't that fully nice to ever own. See you later dad. A couple of days earlier, we see Maruko's schoolmate from that day asking the old lady to be her apprentice. Her name is Yulia Nigaret. Since she was a child she was able to see these scary creatures, this was the world she knew. The old lady tries to get rid of her, but Yulia keeps insisting. So she gives her a prayer bead saying it's brimming with power, take it and go. She happily agrees thinking this means the old grandam agreed, and decided to let some random ghosts go in peace since he doesn't case harm. One day she will be a powerful fortuner and exorcism master. But she came one day to see the old lady's store is closed. The old man next door says she went back hometown saying something about discovering her limits. Who on earth is stronger than the master? The old man says these two girls were her last customers. Naruko and Hana see the store is closed, so they left. Yulia decides to watch them from afar. At sports class, Yulia comes and asks Maruko for a minute. She gets her in the tools locker and closes the door. She introduces herself, while Maruko looks to her side to see the small old men ghosts. You can see them. I know you are one of us. But Maruko decides to play dumb. Yulia gets shocked why Maruko is gonna keep acting, and thinks that it's because she's stronger than her master, she doesn't even want to waste her time with her. I have been watching you, I know you can see them. Maruko can see the small ghosts for sure, but she can also see this one in the back as well. The ugly evil soul comes out and stands next to them watching. But the girl kept insisting that let the monster conclude that they can see him. I'm gonna show you my true power. But the prayer beads break instantly. Yulia can't believe her eyes while the monster is raging crazy, and Maruko doesn't know what to do. She recalls that move she saw on TV, and applies the serpent drope on Yulia till she faints with tears in her eyes. At the nurse's office, Yulia wakes up and gets scared when she sees Maruko next to her. You tried to kill me. Maruko tries to clear it and says, just let it go this time, it's better to pretend that you don't see it, with a smile and leaves. But Yulia saw this in a different way, and cries in fear. You threaten me. I may be weak but I will make you pay for this. Maruko concludes that she can't see the big things. Suddenly Hana asks if she really shocked a classmate to death. In her way from shopping after school, Maruko was going to use stairs. But she sees another creature. She decides to just keep pretending and walk past it like nothing. But it catches her hand suddenly. That gives chills to every cell in her body. But when she looks, she finds out that it's just an old lady want help. Maruko saw so much that she doesn't know the truth anymore. She carries the old lady home and let her down. Her daughter comes and thanks her for getting her mother back. But it's that feeling again. The thing besides her this time isn't a human. She gets to leave but the old lady catches her hand. Is this thing what people call the internet? Maruko screams from inside. Not now grandma. Why your hand is suddenly so strong? The ghost gets closer to them and says some numbers to her ears. Maruko somehow got it and writes the numbers down to the old lady while pretending to explain what this device does. 
The old lady gets inside by herself and goes to a metal lock. But her daughter tells her you already forgot it. You can't open the lock. But she opens it and gets out the last present the father bought for her. Maruko still stands there watching from afar. The ghost goes to her and says, Thank you so much. The next day, Hana is taking a tour around dessert stores with Maruko that says to herself, I envy you for having these big two tanks that store the calories. But she suddenly frees with a shaking eyes. She tries to control herself. Hana, I know a better store. Let's go and check it. Hana happily agrees. But in the back there's something that's terrifying ugly with claws that saw all this. Next day, Maruko wakes up terrified from sleeping. It's getting worse every day. This monster from yesterday was the worst she saw. On the other side, Hana wakes up lazily and finds that her clock stopped working again. She got herself a huge breakfast and shares a picture with Maruko and start dressing herself to get ready for hanging out with her. The light flicks and she says they replaced this one recently. She sees the neighbor's dog barking nonstop. She wonders why he was a good boy. But the dog is scared of something. Even the little ghosts on the way are terrified and they hide when Hana passes by them. It's a nightmare walking beside her. He grabs one of the little ghosts, then throws it on her boobs. The little one is getting burned, and when it's half-cooked, he grabs it again and eats it. The dude really put Hana's pillows to better use. Hana gets hungry again. Even she just had breakfast a little while ago. She gets out a meal from her pack, eats it and in a short while. She shines with energy again. She sees a crying boy on her way, and asks if he's lost. He says that his dog run inside this scary hunted building and he's afraid to go in. She gathers herself and decides to go in saying don't worry, leave it for your big sister. She tries not to show fear and looks everywhere for the dog. And of course, our Gordon Ramsay is following her, grabbing a juicy old man and cooking it as well. Hana decides if she starts singing she won't be afraid and start looking again. She hears a noise and goes to check with more ghost eyes watching her. She comes out with a big dog in her arms and can't help but smile when she sees the look on the kid's face. Then she gets him home. Maruko is wondering why Hana is late, but she hears her calling. She hardly holds her shock when she sees Gordon Ramsay and asks Hana if she were in a hunted house or something. Among the trees, they are climbing long stairs till they got to a shrine. Maruko recognized Gordon Ramsay, but why did he get more big and ugly? They ring the bill, but they don't find anyone. They pick up coins and threw them inside, and Hana starts making her wish to eat all delicious meals. But Maruko is still wishing for someone to save her and Hana from this curse. She looks back to find two more creatures besides the ghost. Great, more of them. Out of a sudden, the two creatures attack Gordon Ramsay. They cut his both arms and fix him to the ground with gravity. But she stands up. I'm not going without a fight bitches. And he kills one of them. He rages loudly and eats the one he killed. Maruko was watching the fight but Hana pulls her to take a selfie with the sunset. But another big creature shows up.